Hello, beautiful. Could you park any closer? Oh my goodness, the fuck? Okay, this is honestly fucking ridiculous. Hello and good afternoon. This is Cullen with Tesla's Wild. I hope you all are having a great Monday. It's been rainy today here, which is actually a really good thing. I love the rain. It's one of my favorite types of weather and we desperately need the moisture here in Colorado. Probably not as bad as some other places. I hope you all had a great Easter yesterday. I have a hopefully informative video to post for you all. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about whether or not it is feasible for someone to own a Tesla without a dedicated home charging system. But in essence, what kind of daily driving habits and are there enough public free chargers as well as how does regular 110 home power do? for charging your Tesla. Now this may be old news for current Tesla owners, or it might be new news, but I'm also looking to help out those prospective Tesla owners who aren't exactly sure whether they would be capable of owning a Tesla purely because of the charging situation they have at home. So let's get right into it. We'll see you guys shortly. Also, yes, I did shave my beard. It was driving me a little bit crazy. That was the longest I've ever let it get. Hopefully y'all weren't just watching the videos because of that beard. Otherwise, I'm out of luck. First of all, I thought I'd do a quick summary on my vehicle and kind of my daily driving habits. I do own a 2018 Tesla Model 3 Performance and has the 310 mile EPA rated range. However, I think this is a bit overestimated for the performance and I think the long range rear wheel drive and the long range all wheel drive do get better ranges, especially because you aren't as capable as driving as aggressively as you are in this vehicle. With that said, I keep my car in the energy format instead of the distance format, so I'm going to be referring to everything in percentages. Hope that's okay. I like the energy format a lot better. It displays as a percent and it feels like your car is much more like your phone and it's just very foreign and weird and awesome. So my regular driving habits consist of driving to and from work with the occasional grocery shopping run. It used to be a lot more. I had a girlfriend and I was visiting her house pretty regularly and using a lot more range. These days it's really just to and from work with occasional errands in between. My commute consists about 50 to 55 miles, and then maybe an extra five miles of errands with that every day. So I'm driving about 50 to 60 miles every single day. This ends up correlating to about 20 to 25%, depending on the current temperature outside. When it's colder, it's definitely more, but anything above 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm using about 20 to 25% religiously. Like everybody, I am a quick driver. It seems to be pretty standard in Colorado that everybody is going about 15 miles per hour above the speed limit. The speed limits here are abnormally slow anyways. All right, so there's a summary of my car and my typical daily driving habits. Let's get into the solutions that I originally used to charge my car and that I use now. I would like to include a caveat that I do have a dedicated home charging system installed at my mom's. I'm just rarely there so I don't make that much use of it. Yesterday was Easter, so I ended up using it, but on the daily, I do not use it. I have to rely on other solutions, and I currently live full-time at a rental house in Golden. It's not feasible to install a home charging system there because it is a rental, and I don't think the landlord would appreciate that, and it would be just a giant waste of money. When I first got my Tesla, I did some research and I saw that in Golden, Colorado, there was a Tesla destination charger at this hotel that was maybe about a two minute drive and a 10 minute walk from my house. So I was using the destination charger very regularly. It turns out that this destination charger was paid for by the hotel that it was hosted at and they ended up shutting it down, which makes sense. I wouldn't want a billion people charging at my charger either. So they ended up shutting this down and only turning it on for hotel guests, which is fine by me. But at that point, I did have to determine a different method of charging. So at this point, I downloaded two apps to my phone. 
The first of which is ChargePoint, and the second is PlugShare. ChargePoint is an amazing app. It's free to download, it's free to create an account, and most of the chargers on there are free. So I looked in my area, and in Golden, there happened to be around five to six ChargePoint chargers. They're J1772, they are for public use, and they are paid for by the city of Golden. A lot of cities have incentives for EV users. They want to implement the charging infrastructure that's needed to make EVs more practical. Let's go, it's an i8. You rarely see stuff like that here. Okay, with that out of the way, I started by using ChargePoint. I'll show you guys that up close and personal shortly. It turns out that it is just a GPS map with your area and the chargers that are associated with ChargePoint there. I started using these right after the destination charger was shut down. They are slower chargers. They charge at about 30 amps, uh, about 20 miles per hour. They're J1772, and they work with the adapter that comes with your Tesla. Like I said, I'm using about 20 to 25% range, and this turns into be about a three to three and a half hour charge time at these charge point chargers. They usually have a time limit associated with them. It's usually around three hours. However, I've never run into an issue. As long as you keep in mind that other people do use these chargers and that you should monitor the app to make sure that you're not clogging up both chargers past the amount of time that you're supposed to be there. If you drive around the same amount that I do, these are well worth it. You can get your car fully charged in a little between three and four hours. They are a phenomenal solution if you can handle going to these chargers and sitting for a couple hours or dropping your car off and taking an Uber home or going to eat or whatever it might be. They are great. They work really well. They are always open, at least in my area, and it is definitely something you should look into. All right, so here we have the ChargePoint app. After you create an account and you open it again, it automatically loads your location and nearby chargers. Green ones indicate that it is open. Dark blue ones indicate both stalls are filled and gray ones mean the status is unknown. This is the one that I regularly go to in Golden here. As we can see, one stall is open, one is taken taken by an electric smart car. After creating your account, you can just hit the start charge button there and confirm that you want to start charging. And you can hear the charger pop open there. Now it says that you can plug in, just confirm that. And as I said, it does use the adapter that is included with your Tesla. All right, so today I have used 19% and it looks like it's gonna take about two hours and 40 minutes to fully charge. That's about all there is to say about that. The second application I use is PlugShare. This one is more just kind of general information about the area you're in and all of the electric chargers that exist in that area. I believe it has charge point chargers, it has other non-associated chargers, it has Tesla destination chargers, as well as Tesla superchargers. It's just a good one to have for general ideas of what is around your area. But I have found that ChargePoint is much more useful as it's all hosted through the app. You can unlock the chargers and use them from the app itself. And the other app that I use is PlugShare. PlugShare is a very similar app. You can zero in on your location and it shows basically all of the electric chargers in the area. It shows the one that I'm currently at and it gives the information, the J1772, its location. If you click the information button, it shows that it's free, open 24 seven, shows the amenities in the area and other check-ins. So as I said, PlugShare is more just a general information of electric chargers, whereas ChargePoint actually allows you to use them. I was using a lot more range in the past because I had a girlfriend. We recently broke up. It's a long story. I don't want to bore you with the details. Woe is me. Such a sad life. It's okay. I'm doing just fine. I was driving a lot more. Now it seems like I'm driving more consistently around 15 to 20% every day. Still around the same 
50 miles because that is my work commute. That does not change, but it's definitely gone down in percent because I'm not running between her and my house at all. So I figured I would give regular 110 power a shot. It turns out it works phenomenally well. It charges a lot faster than I thought as long as I plug in around the time that I get home. It is plenty of time to recoup that 20% I've used throughout the day. My charging time is usually between 6 p.m. and 8 a.m. the next morning. This is plenty of time to get that 15, 18, 20%, whatever I use that day, and to be fully charged the next morning. 110 power is a lot more feasible than I ever thought it was and it's worked out really well for me. I do regularly use 110 power now at my rental house in Golden. This also came with an increase in the power bill. I wasn't sure how much this would actually increase the power bill at our house. From what I've gathered over the past couple months of using the 110 power, it has increased our bill an average of 20 to $30 every month, which is really not that bad at all. I thought it would be much worse and when I look at, I was spending around $250 in gas every month, it's well worth it. It's not as good because it's not free like the charge point chargers are, but it is much more convenient. It is at your house and you don't have to worry about going anywhere and it's ready by the time you wake up in the morning. So that is the best part. It isn't free, it's not as fast, but if you drive around the same amount that I do, it is not a problem to use 110 power. Good, how was your day? It's okay. Yeah. Did you go to your doctor? Oh, okay. So as you saw there, I just plugged into the regular 110 power at my rental house in Golden, Colorado. Looking at the charge time now, it is 11 hours and 45 minutes for 19%. Uh, 11 hours and 45 minutes is really not that bad. Just under 12. It is currently 5.56 p.m., 17.56, whatever you want to call it. So that means that it'll be done around 6 a.m. tomorrow, assuming that the charge rate stays constant. So as you can see, it is actually pretty feasible to use 110 power just from your standard outlet at your house for normal everyday driving. I wouldn't rely on this if you need to charge much more than this. Once you started getting into the 25, 30% range, using 110 power definitely is not as feasible as it used to be. For 25% and under, it definitely is. All right, so that does it. That is a summary of the apps that I originally used, the kind of charging that I originally did, and what I use now, and about how much I drive. In conclusion, I think that it is definitely feasible that you can own a Tesla and not have a dedicated home charging system installed, at least as long as your driving habits are similar to mine, the NEMA 1450, or whatever circuit you choose to install. I do not believe that it's absolutely essential unless you are driving a lot more than I do. I'd say the majority of the nation in their typical daily driving habits, you do not need to install a home charger as long as you've done the proper research and that there's plenty of chargers in your area. Also, whether or not 110 power will work for you. It works for me. I drive just enough to make all of it feasible. At least driving 50 to 60 miles daily is plenty feasible with the charging solutions that I have. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. If you did like this video, please smash that like and subscribe button below. It does truly mean the world to me. I hope you all have a great evening on this Monday and we will see you next time.